and you're deluding yourself into thinking that just because your feet are up the wall, you're floating when you're not floating. You already are on your way down. What's the story, guys? This is Vincent here from the Handstand Academy, and today we're gonna talk about your kick up and all the don'ts and what you really should avoid when you're practicing handstands when it comes to kicking up. So, kicking up is probably one of the most misunderstood parts of handstands. There's two common scenarios. We're either just starting on that journey and we are unable to touch that wall, to reach the wall. The wall feels like it's miles away and we can't even put our foot against it when we kick up against the wall. And it's very common if that's you to feel this heartened to feel that handstands are not for us, that they're just too hard, especially when we compare ourselves to other beginners who seem to be getting it so easy. And without getting into the details, I just want to tell you, if that's your case, that you should not lose faith because in my experience, you just need to stick with it for a bit longer. And in the process, you will be ticking many of the boxes that other people to whom it came easier won't. A few months down the line, you will happen to have more solid foundations than them. It just so happens that you cannot kick up just yet and it will be a bit more frustrating because of course reaching the wall is very rewarding and elating as it is. Be patient, put on the work and it will pay off. But there is a second scenario which I see often as well. We are able to kick up and to reach the wall with our feet but the moment we reach that wall we think that our job is done and we start taking the feet off the wall because this is where the magic is supposed to happen and we start flowing, right? Well, wrong. There are 50 shades of kick ups, right? And the more you practice along the months, along the years, you will need to reevaluate and change and improve your kick up because if you don't, it will become obsolete to your current level of skills. So if you're an improver, and in my methodology, an improver is someone who is transitioning out of the wall. They still need the wall to be refining important things when it comes to alignment and balance, but they have conquered the fear to an extent where they're not afraid to fall anymore. They can bail out of a handstand quite efficiently, but they're not consistent yet and they're not holding the stratus handstand just yet, which is fine. And usually what happens for those students is that they carry with them an obsolete kick up, a kick up which is way too powerful, a kick up which will put them consistently in the overshot zone. And that kick up used to be great a few months ago when finding the wall consistently was a challenge in and of itself. But right now you're able to do that. And that kick up involves too much momentum, involves too many parasite movements, it forces you to perform movements that are bigger than they actually need to be. And usually, has you rely more on how hard you can swing your legs than how controlled you can be through your shoulders. And as a result, we end up having a kick up which is twice as powerful as what it would need to be for your current level, for your current skill level. And so you end up with people who do everything right, by the book, right? Against the wall, who can balance properly, who know what to be looking for, who know the mistakes to avoid, and who have a good kick up or so they think against the wall and then they take this for standing and it doesn't work. And what I need to say to you today is that you need to find a kick up that allows you to get into that balancing zone which you have learned to understand as gently as possible so that you can maximize your chances to successfully balance in it. So let's talk in this video about the progression so that you can evaluate where you are at, assess if you've been skipping some important details and know where to head when it comes to perfecting your technique. To really understand what you're supposed to be doing as you kick up, you have to really grasp what we are after when it comes to balance and what a handstand mechanically is. Too often, I see people, once they have landed against the wall, too eager to pull their legs off the wall and find those few seconds of balance before they come back down to the floor. Because this is what we think a handstand should be. We believe that a handstand, when we practice back to the wall, must be off the wall. And that as long as we're practicing with the wall, well, we're not doing things right. And I'm gonna try to prove you otherwise right now. In this shape, you can see that my leg is way past where the wall would be if I was to kick up against the wall with my hands not far enough. And the same applies to this shape where both legs are way too far and still I and you are able to hold it freestanding. And so in the Hanson Academy, this is what we call a functional shape. It's a viable shape. It works freestanding. And at the end of the day, that's what matters to you. Never mind the dogmas, never mind what such and such person says. If you can hold it freestanding, if you can float, then it works, period. It's a handstand. And so that shape, if I was to have it against the wall, 
I would have my feet through the wall. My legs would literally go past the wall. And therefore, just because you're touching the wall doesn't mean at all that you're doing something wrong. How you get there, how you rest in there, and how you take off from that position are what will make that shape viable or not, right or wrong. And this will dictate whether or not you will make progress. And that's not all, because here's another bad habit I see all the time. Once we have some control in our kick up, we tend to not land. We try too hard not to land against the wall because we think that the wall is bad. We think that the wall equals failure. However, given what we just said, being against the wall is just a proof that you are in the overshot zone. And you need to be somehow in the overshot zone for you to be able to balance, especially in the first few years of your practice. For 99% of you, your handstands will not exist freestanding anywhere else than the overshot zone for more than a few seconds. And therefore, if you try to avoid the wall like a plague, if the wall is lava and you try to prevent your feet from touching them at all costs, what you're really doing is that you're shooting yourself in the foot because you're preventing yourself from actually going into that zone in which without the wall you will eventually float. And you're deluding yourself into thinking that just because your feet are off the wall you're floating when you're not floating, you already are on your way down. And I like to call this the timber moment. The timber moment when a tree is being chopped off and we scream timber! When that tree starts coming back down towards the floor after having been chopped off, it slowly tips out of axis and then accelerates as it falls down on the floor. The initial stages of the fall are quite slow, so much so that in your handstand you will conflate that with still being balanced. The first signals of you being on your way down to the floor, of you exiting the overshot zone and going into the undershot zone where everything becomes much more complicated when it comes to recovering your handstand are very subtle, very hard to decipher at first and very easy to ignore because we think we're still balancing. And that's why you want to think twice when you force yourself to kick up and hold the handstand for a few seconds off the wall and never reach the wall and come back down to the floor. Because just like that tree, you were never anchored, you were never rooted in the first place. Now, in terms of progressions, I want to leave you in this video with a clear idea of where you are at and where you should go, given all the elements we just mentioned. First and foremost, you should be able to find the floor, to touch it. And as we were saying in the intro, for a third of you, this will not come natural. And if that's you, don't fret. We will talk about this in other videos. And you can find all the tutorials and the tips and the guides by going to the Hanson Academy website. And now let me reassure you, this has nothing to do with your core. Next progression, you should be able to land consistently against the wall. Touching is just a way for us to prove to our nervous system that the wall is here. Even though we understand that it's here in theory, we don't trust that the wall will catch us. And by touching that wall consistently, we allow ourselves to eventually trust that as we kick up, we will, at worst, land on that wall and crash against it. But nothing more serious can happen than that. Once you can do that, you want to be able to land against the wall. That is, stay against the wall for a few seconds. If you can do that, you want to be able to land consistently 10 times out of 10 on demand. You should be able to kick up against the wall and come back down. So just try this. You have 10 attempts. Kick up 10 times against the wall. If you surprise yourself under shooting for one or more attempts, you may not be ready to just bring too much attention on taking off the wall and balancing. Your kick ups are not as good as you think they were. Finally, if you can land consistently, you should be aiming at landing consistently and softly every single time. And this will require a lot of practice, of course, that this will allow you to get into the balancing zone softly and therefore maximize your chances at holding the handstand 
once you get there. Once you are able to land 10 times out of 10 against that wall, softly in the desired alignment, you are really ready to bring your attention to other elements of your handstands. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't mind them before that, it means that you shouldn't discard the kick up parts too soon and until you get to that point. I hope that makes sense. Any question, let me know down below. And for more resources and information, including a free training about handstands, head to thehandstandacademy.com.